Most interviewers nowadays use a technique called competency-based interviewing. And in this video, I'll show you what it's all about in the simplest possible terms. And I'll show you the 10 most common mistakes that people make and how to deal with them. At its simplest, competency-based interviewing is based on the principle that past behavior is a reliable predictor of future performance. So if it's a selling job, the interviewer will ask you, what's your previous experience in selling? As simple as that. Now the two most common structures used are PAR and STAR. PAR, P-A-R, Problem, Action, Result. What was the problem? What did you do? What results did you achieve? The more common one is STAR. Situation, Task, Action and Result. So say, for example, you're being asked about your previous experience in producing promotional literature. In the S portion, you'll be asked about the situation. Well, it was coming up to Christmas and I was being asked to produce sales literature because of all the products we had. In the T phase of the interview, you'll be asked to define precisely what your objective was. So I had three weeks in which to produce 2000 leaflets and I had a budget of 500 euro. In the A portion, the action portion, you tell the interviewer what you did to achieve that objective. Make it easy for the interviewer by breaking it down into big segments. For example, the first segment was about writing and laying out the leaflets. Second segment was about printing them. And the third was about distributing them. And in the last portion, or the results. What results did you achieve? Did you meet your objective? Did you come in on time and on budget? And it's great if you can say to the interviewer, actually, I got a few leaflets extra thrown in, I saved a few euro, and I was two days early. Interviewers are impressed with that sort of thing. Simple, isn't it? Well, it's not that simple, because here come the 10 most common mistakes and how to deal with them. One using somebody else's experience and claiming it as your own. Don't do this. Believe it or not, some people look around for good examples to use in competency-based interviews and they get into trouble because interviewers are trained to find out date, time and detail. So don't bluff. Two, spending too much time explaining the situation. You don't get points here, so keep it brief. Three, not defining the task precisely. Some people say things like, well, I was asked to do something about the problem. No, precisely define your objective. I had three weeks to produce 2,000 leaflets and a budget of 500 euro. Four, being short on action. Give the interviewer as much detail on what you did and how you did it. This is where you score the points because you're giving examples of past behavior. Five, being short on results. Saying useless things like, and that solved the problem. It's better to tell the interviewer if you're on time and on budget. It's even better to tell the interviewer if you're ahead of time and under budget. Six, not referring your examples to the job description. The interviewer is trying to find somebody with the right experience. The nearer you can get your experience to what they want, the better. Sorry. Seven, not knowing the competencies in detail. If you're being interviewed about leadership, you need to know what are the behaviors that make a good leader. For example, motivating people, delegating, inspiring, supporting, mentoring, and coaching. This takes a lot of hard work because you've got to relate these sub-competencies to your experience and show that you've actually done these things in the past. Eight, using the royal we. One of the most common mistakes is if you're working in teams to say, we did this and the team did that. The interviewer is not hiring the team, they're hiring you. So tell the interviewer what the team relied on you for and what was your part of the team's success. Nine, not being aware of the learning. Some people say, I just did the job and that was it. The interviewer wants to know what you learned over time, how your technique improved, how you grew with the job. And 10, 
not watching the clock. The big problem for interviewers is that competency-based interviews have a lot of moving parts and can take a lot of time. A lot of interviewees lose marks by just going on and on. Help the interviewer by practicing sample answers before the interview and try and keep things as compact as possible. A good practice technique is to see if you can land a complete star answer in less than five minutes. And you do it this way. You spend about a minute or so, no more, on the situation, giving the background. Take about 30 seconds to explain T, the precise task. You have about three minutes to spend on the actions, what you did and how you did it, leaving about 30 seconds to wrap it up with or the result. Do this on video or audio and get used to hearing yourself and seeing yourself in action. That way you'll be comfortable when you go in for the real thing. Good luck with your next competency interview and if I can help in any way, you can call me on this number.